Hello everyone, my name is Ninoa and welcome to my unhurried playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn Part 15.2. Alright, so today we are going to pick up things pretty much exactly where we left them off. We are still in Gridania, we still have a few things to do here before we can move on, which includes um, the Disciples of Hand class quests as well as a new unlock for the one log that we still have yet to obtain. We will also take care of our ground company hunting log. I'll show you a couple of locations that can be a bit tricky for enemies there. And finally, we will head to Ulda. All right. And without further ado, let's go! So yeah, you have this blue quest here that I'm going to take care of shortly. There was another one located right next to the door, but if you've seen some of my previous videos, you would know that I'm going to pick up on this particular blue quest much later. But before all that, I'm going to head to the North Strad, and before I go, I want to pick up one specific item. And the person who has it is my Santa. In each city, you have a seller of items, which is not far away from the main Etherite, and they will typically have Geysal Greens to sell you. Remember last time we unlocked the ability to use our Chocobo as a companion and in order to summon him you need Geysal Greens. This is where you can buy them. Also just a quick note, um, these sellers near the Etherite also have various items such as minions and Orchestrian rolls that are cheap. So, if you are a collector, this is a good place to start with these two particular collections. And now we are ready to head into the worlds of the North Shroud and beyond, as you will see shortly. Okay, so I'm going to do this fate and completely misused arm length in the process here, anyways. Something I want to show you is that just like you, your companion's level is synced down during those fates for which your level is too high. And in the same manner, your Chocobo is going to earn experience. as you defeat very low level enemies. So that's a pretty easy way to level up your chocobo quickly. Because again, the amount of XP your chocobo is going to earn depends on the difference of level. Because you are seeing down, the level is pretty close to yours and so the amount of experience is going to be pretty important. Something I want to show you here in the North Shroud are Bane Mites. I probably showed that to you in a previous video in passing but this is pretty important. So Bane Mites drop two items. One type of sinew, which we'll use in crafting at higher levels than we are at the moment, actually. And the other one is Diamite Web. 
And this is really the item that if you are crafting, you are going to need a lot of because diamite webs allow you to craft velveteen. And velveteen is a type of cloth that is going to be dominating reverse crafting all the way to level 35 roughly. And I've just noticed that my chocobo's timer has probably reset at some point. Which means that it has leveled up. So I'm going to head into the companion interface. Where I can unlock a new skill. And we are back after I've done a little bit more dynamite farming. And now I'm looking at the order of the twin adder hunting lug because remember I am stuck now with my leveling up through the ranks by the hunting lug. I need to complete rank one. I only have a few entries left to do. And one is going to be located here in the North Shroud. With a type of Ixali that is located here in this area. Unfortunately, I also have a level 50 enemy hanging around. And this one, well, it's going to attack me on site. So. I have to be a bit careful about where I'm moving to avoid detection. So if you are a, um, a melee DPS or a tank, remember to use your ranged attack in those cases in order to bring the enemy to you. Especially in this case. The chocobo is not going to aggro the enemy, by the way. So it's okay if your chocobo runs off, but uh, you should stay well out of sight because at this stage there is no way I'm going to survive an attack by this one. So that's a hunting log entry completed. And here we arrive at Fall God Float. The MSQ is going to take us here in two videos from now. So I'm going to ignore most of it, but we will be back in order to do some fishing. For now, I'm heading all the way to the western border and crossing it is going to take us into a brand new area we haven't talked about yet, the Curtas Central Highlands. Again, this is an area that the MSQ is going to take us to in about 10 levels from now. So it's pretty far off and the level of enemies here ranges from 35 to almost 50. So obviously I do not intend to thoroughly explore Kurtas for now. But as I've just mentioned, the game is going to take us back here anyway. 
What I'm interested in right now is this secluded area I'm showing to you on the map. East from where we are at the moment. Because this is where I can find one enemy I need for the hunting log. The Ixali Fear Caller. Turns out we only needed the one. So now if I look at my hunting log, I have just two more entries to complete. And then I'll finally be able to rank up. All right, so we're going to head back to the shroud, but we will be back to Kurtas before too long, even before the MSQ takes us here, because there are other quests that we will want to do before that. So now we're heading back to Fall God Float to do a bit of fishing. So I've come here for the level 25 class quest for Fisher, and in order to catch the fish I will need, I need to use this ability called Mooch, which is unlocked at level 25. And Mooching means you want to use one fish as bait in order to catch another fish. Here I'm looking specifically for the stripped gubby and in order to use it as mooch you need a large version of it. Regular ones won't work. And luckily <laughs> I got there very quickly. So now instead of putting it away or releasing it, I'm going to use the mooch ability. And this is a fish I was looking for, Shadow Catfish. I also got an achievement for the number of different fishes I've caught until now. And I got very lucky, by the way. Sometimes it can take a long time to get the right fish in the right version. But yeah, here first try and we were good. So I'm going to head back now to Gridania, where the Disciples of Hand class quests are waiting for us.
Alright, so time to head to the Carpenter's Guild. Level 20, the Lancer's Lesson. Timber Master Bitin has a request for a well-traveled carpenter. The rewards are 24,360 points of experience, 470 gil, an initiate sew, and a choice between an initiate headgear, all classes level 20, initiate gloves, handgear, all classes level 20, cut down bridges of crafting, leg gear, all classes level 19, or four Alagan bronze pieces for a total value of 200 gil. Ah, Ninua, my thoughts have turned to you lately. I trust you have honed your skills further since last we met. In that case, I have a request. Mayhap you have made iron lenses before for your customers. However, you have not made them for me. As you doubtless know, my standards differ from those of Arthur's. An iron lenses design is one of elegance and simplicity, and I would see you demonstrate your understanding of those qualities through your work. This I ask of all my charges. The iron lens is a marriage of elm, iron and leather. As you are doubtless aware, the requisite elm lumber and circles of leather are readily available within the city. Iron ingots, however, are much rarer as they are forged by the smithies of Limsalaminsa. Procuring them will prove far more problematic. You must steal yourself for a long and arduous journey, Ninua. The wilderness is infested with unspeakable horrors and the roads are watched by bandits' hordes. But I jest. While such arduous character-building trials may have been possible once upon a time, they are, alas, simply unfeasible now. You need only browse the market boards or enlist the aid of a blacksmithing associate to obtain the iron you require. Oh, and there is but one more thing you must needs do. I would have you attach a single materia to the lens you craft. Any type will suffice. I find it hard to believe that an experienced adventurer like yourself could be unfamiliar with the substance, but on the off chance that you are, I suggest you seek out that goblin fellow in central Thunderland. There is no one more knowledgeable on the subject, also I have heard. When you are in possession of all the necessary materials, I bid you craft me a single materia enhanced iron lance. <laughs> Yeah, we won't have to um, confront the wilds and hordes of bandits um, to get iron. Crafting one should be enough. Although you are out in the wilds in order to gather the iron ore, but to be fair, that's a pretty safe location. Okay, so I'm quickly going to check what I need to craft exactly. So I need one hard leather. For that, I'm going to switch to leather worker. Now you see me craft uh, NQ items. That's because y at this stage you still don't need craft anything high quality so now it's just a matter of crafting the elm lumber And assembling the iron lens. All right, so that's the lens crafted. All that remains is to attach the materia. Any materia will uh, do. 
but I would strongly recommend that you go with the green or blue ones that is crafting or gathering because they are a lot cheaper on the market. So what I am going to do is right click on the item I want to attach material to, select meld And once in the material melding interface, you can see on the left side you have the item or items uh, you can meld to, and on the right the list of all the material you have in your inventory. And you can meld any that's not grayed out. So as I mentioned, I'm going to ignore all the material up to piety material. And I'm going to meld probably the craftsman cunning materia, CP plus one. Because that's probably the one with the least worth to me. Is your lens ready? I am eager to see what you have wrote. You do not disappoint, you know. Your land exceeds my expectations. These formidable weapons were originally intended to use by the Ishgardian cavalry and were designed with the aim of maximizing their bearer's effectiveness on the field of battle. By utilizing the speed of his mount, a lance-wielding knight could easily deliver a devastating blow that would cripple if not outright kill. But this mode of attack placed significant strain on both the rider and his weapon. Should the latter foil, the knight would be left defenseless. Needless to say, the iron lanes proved to be anything but prone to failure. Eventually prompted Gridania's wood whalers to adopt it as their own. The differences between the modern Gridanian weapon and the Ishgardian original are not so substantial, amounting to little more than a smaller vamplate. Our lancers do not require the same protection as a mounted knight, you see. Fascinating, is it not? The history our weapons carry, how they change and evolve to meet different demands. Truly, all things possess potential for growth. Weapons and armor, forests and cities, and aspiring carpenters. Remember this too, Ninua. The iron lance is a marvelous weapon, not because it does not bend at the moment of impact, but because it does not break. To bend, yet not to break, to endure and persevere, and finally triumph. When I gaze upon this lance, I am reminded of the singular importance of resolve, a quality I saw in you when you first joined us, and that will serve you well in the future. Whatever trouble you may face, Remain resolute as an iron lance, and you will succeed. Level 25, a crisis of confidence. Something appears to be troubling Timbermaster Beatin. The rewards are 40,800 points of experience, 557 gil, an initiate's claw hammer, and a choice between silver magnifiers, headgear level 24, an initiate's gown, body gear level 24, velveteen hand gloves, hand gear level 24, or an alagan silver piece for a value of 500 gil. Oh, Nina. You look well. If you have come in search of work, I fear I have nothing to offer. Though, if you have no other pressing responsibilities, you might consider spending some time with the younglings in the Archon Orchard. The workshop has demanded my full attention of late, and I have been unable to see to them myself. That will be all, Inua. Is he depressed? He sounded a bit depressed.
Hey, you're one of those adventurers that joined the guild. Bidin's down in the dumps, is he? No wonder he hasn't visited in ages. I've seen him like this before. I'll bet it's because he can't think of anything new to make. He's no fun when he's like this. I prefer it when he's waving his sword around and threatening to tie his useless new apprentices to figure guys gift and... Uh, Wait, I know. You are a pretty good carpenter, no? Then you can make high-quality walnut lumber. You know how he's always saying stuff like, you must know the wood and all that? Well, I bet if we gave him some really good wood, it would cheer him up in no time. I know it sounds a bit strange, but then he is a bit strange, isn't he? And we have to try something. I miss a mean old beating. Nicolio is quite the astute little guy, isn't he? For the first time, we are required in a crafting quest to craft a high quality item and from now on that's going to be the case. All the way to level 50. Fun is over, the real work begins. Well, walnut lumber is really not difficult to craft per se. It only requires three walnut logs, which are found in the South Shroud. I'm going to show you exactly where if you haven't seen the location in my previous video. And from now on, you cannot rely on the guild's shop to obtain what you need to craft any of the items you are required to do deliver. Okay, so from now on, I'm starting all my crafting with innovations and then I use touch, actions. Innovation is a skill you acquire at level 26 and increases all your next four touches actions. Leave me be, Ninoa. I must focus. What is this malaise which plagues me? I thought myself resolute as an iron lance and yet... It's okay, we have the remedy for you. Hmm. Yes, I feel it. I feel it. This high quality walnut lumber, it is your handiwork, is it not? Dense, durable and expertly finished. There is no doubting your skill, you know. Walnut furniture was once quite popular in Ulda. Mayhap we could revive that tradition. Or better yet, produce a sturdier base for a new vamplate design. The possibilities are endless. Thanks to you, Ninoa, it seems I am now paralyzed with indecision. How oh, you have grown and in so short a time. You remind me of a dear friend, another soul, possessed of great passion. Though we walked different paths, we pushed each other to give nothing less than our utmost. He even helped me through those times when inspiration failed me. I see much of him in you. And so I know I can hold you to the same high standards. Return to your work, Ninoa, and do not disappoint me. So that's the Carpenter's class quests done for now. Next up. Before we head to the Leather Workers Guild, I'm going to pick up one of the blue quests still open in the Carline Canopy. And for that we are going to talk to Nao Gamdula. Level 20, a sight to behold. Nao Gamdula wishes the patrons of the Carline Canopy would keep a closer eye on their belongings. The rewards are 870 points of experience and 320 gil. <sighs> As if I'm not busy enough without playing Lost and Found. Oh, do forgive me, friend. 
Once again, one of our customers has departed without her belongings, and I am at a loss for what to do about it. While I understand that adventurers have many cares on their minds, it would make my life much easier if they could keep their personal effects in order. But you did not come here to lend an ear to my grumblings. This is a book in question. The face of its owner was unfamiliar to me, but Eral over there seemed quite smitten with her, as with every pretty lass he lays his eye on, but that's neither here nor there. But I trouble you to inquire to as to the girl's whereabouts. I found the man to be less than forthcoming ever since I spurred his advances. Oh, and you want me to talk to him? Oh well. Ah, the sweet little thing with the journal. Of course I remember her, and remember her well. Had a smile to warm the heart and a laugh, a lilt, one might say, to tickle the depths of the soul. And she was most eager to hear tales of my many travels, which speaks to a keen and sensitive mind. Jilly, I believe, was her name. No, that's not right. Jilly was a redhead from last week. Ah, damn, if I can remember. You must understand, no small number of comely lasses seek out my company. I dare say, keeping all the names and faces straight is an adventure in itself. Any road, the girl spoke of paying a visit to Ab Cali Falls before travelling on. Like as not, you'll find her there now, shedding a tear or two at our parting. Do pass along my regards if you see her. She should be readily recognisable in that charming straw heart of hers. Ugh. I feel like I need a shower just for talking to him. So we've never really spent any time at Abkalu Falls, which is in Gridania, but away from most places you go back often to. Yes, she is. No, that wasn't Jilly, it was Millis. Pardon, I don't believe we've met. Hmm? You've something of mine, you say? Age one log. Within its brittle pages are detailed sketchings of landscapes and vistas, numbering in the hundreds. My journal! Thanks, the twelves. In my haste to escape the clutches of that insufferable mutton monger, it slipped my mind entirely. But I be so bold as to ask your name? You have my gratitude, Ninua. It may not look like much, but I count this humble diary among my most prized possessions. Its pages brim with the tales of the most heart-stirring sights to be seen in our realm, as told to me by the sensitive souls I have met in my travels across Eorzea, tales that have struck me with the most incurable case of wanderlust. As an adventurer, you too have seen the realm, I am sure. But I would ask you, Ninua, have you truly seen her, born witness to Eorzea in her myriads of splendor? Have you stood on the palm-fringed beaches of Costa del Sol just as the sun peeks out over the horizon, its rays kissing the sands beneath your feet? Have you lost yourself in the night sky of the Sagoli, adrift amidst a boundless sea of stars? Ah. But why do I even try to convey with words which needs be seen to be appreciated? To our fortune, with us soever we wander, Eosia's beauty is but a stone's throw away. If I may quote from my journal, this is the one. Afore the fane beneath the two that are as one, her divine cup runneth over with light ethereal. Such were the conjurer's words, and I would see as she saw. 
I saw for myself before coming here, and I can assure you, the conjurer spoke true. Indulge me, go there and look out upon the beauty before you. I would hear your thoughts. So we have to head to Stillglade Fane, which is a place she is referring to, and use the lookout emote when we reach the right spot. And we are pretty much in the middle of the area marked on the map. So now you can either bring up the list of emotes and choose lookout or write lookout slash lookout in the chat box. You have looked upon one of Eorzea's stirring vistas as identified by the explorer Millis Ironheart. Return to Abkalu Falls and report your sighting. And yeah, she is right, it is very pretty and striking. So in the center here, you see the trees which almost look like... If you've seen the Lord of the Rings, one of the ants in the middle of walking. And then on the right you have that very large stone with the symbol. Which we are going to talk about in many, many, many videos from now. <laughs> but that symbol and many others will come upon as you travel through Eorzea, uh, an integral part of Eorzea's culture and mythology. Welcome back, Ninua. I trust you were as moved by the sight as I was? The great stone that adorns the entrance to Stillglad Fane is none other than the sky serpent's egg cast down from the heavens by Nafika the matron so long ago. And those mammoth tree trunks? Remnants, no doubt, of a primeval forest. Whence did they come? Why do the two great arbors grow as one? This I do not know, but what I do know is that the realm is replete with such beauty, if only we know where to look. This is what compels me to wonder, not the promise of power, glory or riches, but a burning desire to bear witness to all the wonders around us, as wrought by gods and men alike. Though we have just met, the twinkle in your eye tells me that we share certain aesthetic sensitivities. It would be my pleasure to gift you with a sightseeing log of your own. In its pages, you will find my record of the most stirring sights in the realm, both those I have seen with my own eyes and those I have, thus far at least, only heard of in my travels. No doubt your adventures keep you occupied, but is it not all the more reason to take in the sights as you travel, that both body and mind might enjoy a moment's respite from time to time? And who can say, perhaps you will discover glorious new vistas that have eluded even me. With that, I wish you safe travels, Ninua. When you have seen all there is to see, pray return to me. I would like nothing more than to share impressions with a fellow sensitive soul. You now have access to the sightseeing log, a compendium of the most beautiful sights to be seen in Eorzea, as compiled by the explorer Millis Ironheart. 
To open it, select Logs from the main menu followed by Sightseeing Log. From the snippets of information contained within, identify and seek out the location described. Note that certain sites may only be properly appreciated at a given time of day or under ideal weather conditions. Perform the designated emote while taking in the sites and the entry for the corresponding vista will be marked off. With your sightseeing log in hand, go forth and see Eosea as few have ever seen her before. And we have some more information. The sightseeing log is a comprehensive record of breathtaking landscapes and stunning vistas you have discovered across Eosea. Vistas are often difficult to reach, some requiring sprinting or jumping, and are only recorded upon discovering the exact location noted in Melissa's impressions. Time of day and weather are also important to uncovering vistas, as are the emotes you perform once you have arrived at one. Melissa's impressions will often contain hints on these hidden conditions, though you may still need all your wits to discover some of the more obscure entries. Once an entry is completed, a rough sketch and information on the location's history will be added to your log. So here you see the sightseeing log interface. In the leftmost column you have a list of regions. In the middle you have a list of all the locations. For now we have only 20, but once we have completed these 20 we will have more coming. And on the right, if you hover over any of the locations, you have impressions that will give you a hint for the exact location, the weather conditions, the time and or uh, the emote. Not all the impressions uh, give you good information in those respects, except for location. But sometimes it is extremely difficult to figure out the right weather, time and or emote. A lot of the times a lookout emote is the one you want to use, but there are a few entries where the emote is going to be different. Also note that while some entries are available regularly at fairly regular intervals and several times throughout a day Earth time, some of them will be available only once or twice every day Earth time or even you will only find them available once or twice per week. So to sum up, the sighting log is a fun feature to help you discover Eorzea, but uh, it's quite time consuming. So I'm going to reserve some time after we complete 2.0 MSQ to do this. In the meantime, I'm going to talk to this man, Jonasas, Master of the Rolls. You've accomplished enough feats to keep the bard singing for a lifetime, lass. Such an achievement should not go unrecognized, and to that end I'd like you to have this. Consider it a token of my highest esteem. Your accrued achievement points have earned you an achievement certificate. Certificates may be exchanged for a special reward of your choice by speaking with Jonathan. When I was a young man, I had the honor of working as a court scribe. I, in the good old days when my eyes were keen and the royal family still held true power in Uldar. But the day seemed to go by that the royal palace didn't burst into a rainbow of colors with lavish functions and opulent feasts. Nowadays, though, it's true tales of adventure and daring do that delight me most. If you have done any deeds you are proud of, I'd like it very much if you share them with me. Might be as I'll even give you a little something in return. So this is how it works. For every 50 achievement points you obtain through completing achievements, obviously, you can exchange them, quote-unquote, for an achievement certificate. 
you don't really exchange them though because you keep them you keep your achievement points but he will give you um Jonathan will give you automatically achievement certificates for every 50 new achievement points and those certificates can be used by exchanging them for real this time for items that Jonathan has in his stock So now let's talk to Jonathan again to have a look at his wares. Hello there, young one. How very kind of you to offer a doddering old man like me a bit of company. Tell me, do you like tales? I do like a good tale, especially true ones told by them as lifted. And so here is a list. You don't have any weapons. There are a few quote-unquote armor, which is really uh, glamour items. But you have a lot in the others category. As you can see, there are quite a lot of minions. He also has some mounts and some bardings. As well as an orchestrion roll and a furniture item. For now, I'm going to get the wild rose barding for my chocobo as well as the orchestrion roll. And I'll come back later to acquire all the minions and mounts. So I'm going to use the inventory items corresponding to what I've just obtained from Jonathan, as well as the orchestrion roll I acquired earlier from my center for 5,000 gil. And now time to head to the Leather Workers Guild because we still have the Leather Workers class quests to complete before we head to Ulda. Level 20, I'll go to everything. Guildmaster Jeva has a difficult task for you. The rewards are 24,360 points of experience, 470 gil, an initiate's head knife, and a choice between an initiate's head gear, level 20, initiate's gloves, level 20, cotton breeches of crafting, level 19, or four Alagan bronze pieces for a value of 400 gil. Ah, there you are, Ninua. I hope you've been working on your techniques, because I have a difficult task for you. Well, mayhaps not as difficult as I had originally intended. I'd thought to bid you prepare a hundred circles of Algot leather, but instead I want to gauge your aptitude for materia melding. You have at least a passing familiarity with materia, correct? The crystallized substance often used to enhance the properties of weapons and armor, I certainly hope you do, Ninua, because an experienced leather worker is expected to possess the skills to melt materia to his wares. For this task, you will affix a single materia to a pair of goatskin leggings. What type of materia you use is of no consequence. What matters is your ability to successfully attach it. And it goes without saying that you must make the leggings as well. To do so, you'll need cotton cloth and algoat leather. Most cotton cloth is produced by the weavers of Ulda's sun silk tapestries, while algoat leather is, of course, obtained from algoats, which roam the deserts of Sunderland. Lest you think I mean to send you all the way to the Sultanate, fear not. 
If you can obtain your materials by perusing the market boards or by eliciting the help of friends, by all means do so. That said, a trip to central Sunderland might be warranted if you know nothing of materia. There is a goblin somewhere out there who is said to be an authority on the subject. Now run along and get crafting, Ninoa. Thankfully we don't have to run anywhere because we already know about materia and uh, we have all the materials necessary for the crafting. So it's just a bit of cotton and alt goat, so pretty straightforward again. So again, alt goat leather is really one of those basics that are very much in demand and are easy to sell on the market. So if you have retainers, this is something you want to keep in mind, at least at this stage of the story. So now I just need to craft the leggings and to affix the materia. Same as earlier, I'm going to use some materia I won't have any use for. Meld. And the goat skin leggings are ready. Are the leggings ready yet? I trust you did not forget to attach a materia to it. Well, they could be worse. <laughs> this is such a Jeva thing to say. I don't know how long you've been about this adventuring business, Nilua, but did you know that leggings were once no more than strips of cloth or leather? It's true. We used to wrap each leg with a single long strip from ankle to knee. Nowadays, of course, designs which extend to the thigh are far more popular. Soft, lightweight leggings like these provide the balance of protection and flexibility demanded by the wood whalers, the god squiver, and adventurers like your good self. Based on your leggings, I'd say you understood well the importance of these qualities, not to mention the basics of materia melding. Indeed, if I were to judge your performance on a scale of 1, of one to 10, I would give you a 6. No, a 7. <laughs> The remaining three points, you ask? Quite simple, really. Your leggings were made from skins which were taken from living creatures. The Twelve's Wood is filled with a wealth of life which we leather workers must take in order to craft our products. Do you know how that old goat lived? How it was killed and skinned? Do you understand how these skins find their way to our hands? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. I formed them myself. To understand this process is to understand life itself. Those leather workers whose creations truly deserve to bear the name of Fen Il have faced this burden and accepted it. To them, it's simply truth. Therein lies the difference between the good and the great. Your leggings are fine, Ninua. It is you that needs improvement. Call me an incurable optimist, but I do not think it beyond you. Well, that's kind of her, I guess. Study your materials and learn their history. Practice your craft and keep discovering new techniques. 
that is still your path forward. And who knows, mayhap one day I will allow you to represent the guild in the annual exhibition and pit your skills against the finest craftsmen in all of Gridania. Of course, that day, should it ever come, is yet a long way off. Still, it is good to have a goal, however distant, is it not? Her brand of optimism is something else. Um, <laughs> but in a way she's right, so you kind of have to suck it up and uh, move forward. Level 25, skin in the game. Guildmaster Jeva appears to be upset. Though it would probably be wiser not to, perhaps you should see what is troubling her. The rewards are 40,800 points of experience, 557 gil, an initiates all, and a choice between silver magnifiers, headgear level 25, initiates gown, body gear level 24, velveteen half gloves, hand gear level 24, or an Alagan silver piece for a value of 500 gil. Oh, will he pay? I swear by Luisa's beard, I'll tear the skin from his... Nenua, it's good that you are here. Listen to this. An old down merchant has set about blackening the guild's good name. He claims that some toad leather we sold him is, and I quote, of inferior quality. You heard me. Inferior! The goal of the man! I swear to you, I would be the very soul of contrition if his allegations were proven true. But it just seems so, so utterly unthinkable. Why, he claims the leather was unevenly tanned and still reeking of toad slime. It's clear that whoever made that leather didn't know the first thing about working with toad skin. Which means that there is no way in the seven hells that it came from us. Believe me when I tell you, Ninua, I'll be deep in the cold hard ground before I permit such shoddy work to bear our name. The very thought of some two gill hide mongler claiming to represent this guild makes me want to... Ah! Ultimately, it doesn't matter that this isn't our handiwork. If our customers begin to suspect that our standards are slipping and that we are not showing our materials the proper respect, our good name will be lost and our many years of hard work will have been for naught. We cannot let that happen. Though I am certain we have done no wrong, we need to make this right. We'll settle this with a display of authentic craftsmanship. Prepare a circle of high-quality toad leather and bring it to me for inspection. Understood? I think of all the guildmaster, she's the most... market savvy in that she understands the importance of the guild's name and how, you know, public perception works. So again, the item we need to craft is a basic one. It just requires one toad skin and one pinch of almond. The trick here, again, is that we have to craft a high quality one. So you better have your gear upgraded. Prepare a circle of high-quality toad leather and bring it to me immediately. I want this matter resolved as soon as possible. This will do nicely, Ninua. You clearly understand the unique properties of toad skin and how best to harness them. This leather is sturdy, flexible and completely free of unpleasant odors. There is but one thing left to do. I want you to take this toad leather, march down to the carlin canopy, and shove it in this Amar's face. Shows him pertinent fool what real fen ill quality looks like. Except I'm not you, <laughs> Jeva. I'm not going to um, march. I'm going to run.
completely and utterly unacceptable. Shame on Fen Il and their vainglorious claims. How could anyone call this rubbish toad leather? About time one of you charlatans showed up. What is this? More toad leather? I demanded a full refund, not more of your... your... Wait, is this... By the twelve, I have never seen such exquisite toad leather. This would make an excellent belt or bag. Am I to understand that you are a producer of fenil goods? And you bring this to me, by special order of the legendary Jeva herself? What in the world is the meaning of this? I am most terribly sorry, good lady. When the merchant told me it was Gridanian leather, I naturally assumed that this Anger Botha was somehow affiliated with Fen Il. Yeah, you know, assumptions are not necessarily fact. You should have checked. I should have known it was too good to be true. A fraction of the time, a fraction of the price, he said. Well, I certainly got what I paid for. I mean, I had never even heard of Anger Botha before, but everyone knows what Gridania is famous for. No, no more excuses. It is my responsibility as a merchant to evaluate the supplier, and my own damn fault that I purchased an inferior product. Reputation is everything in this world, and I fear I have unjustly besmirched your guilds. And yet, despite all that, the great Jeva saw fit to gift me this exquisite leather. Well, I too have a reputation to uphold. This gesture cannot go unanswered. Well, he takes responsibility at least. I don't know if it will be enough for Jeva, but... Having said that, I do understand Jeva's position because I work for manufacturers of luxury products in real life and um, a lot of them require very technical procedures to produce and very high quality base materials. So counterfeits are in this case, never going to be anything remotely as good as the original. But unfortunately, they can, if they are mistaken for the real thing, uh, diminish the value of the brand. Excellent work, Ninua. That bastard Aima felt so appallingly guilty, he rushed over here to beg my forgiveness in person. I have witnessed some groveling in my time, but his was a truly masterful display. Bowing, stuttering, snivelling, it had it all. Oh, how I wish you had seen it, Ninua. A proud Uldan merchant, humbled by a circle of toad leather. You've improved more than I thought. Now all we have to do is find out who is making this Anger Bertha dress. Our contrite friend said that he had been told it was a new Gridanian brand, but no one here has heard of it. New Gridanian brand. <laughs> it's obvious they mean to capitalize on our good name. I'd like to meet the man who made that toad leather. He probably doesn't want to meet you, though. <laughs> Actually, Ninoa, should you happen across him on your travels, I'd consider it a personal favor if he would flay the skin from his back and make me a pair of soles so that I can grind him into the dirt every single day. Oh, I love her way of thinking. And that was the last quest in Gridania for now. So it is time to head for Ulda, but I'm not going to go by airship for once. I'm actually to go going to go on... Well, I was going to say on foot, but it's really on Chocobo's back. And there is a specific reason for my madness, and for that I'm going to see you 
in the South Shroud. See you there. Back in the South Shroud and I'm not going to head too far off because I need both items I can find here. The effervescent water and you will need 15 of it. Although you may want to uh, gather a bit more if you are a crafter. That's going to be useful for one of our miners class quests. And if you haven't yet, you will also need some silver ore. You just need enough to craft one ingot, so three chunks of silver ore. But silver being quite often used in level 25 to 35, 40 recipes across the board you might want to gather a bit more if you haven't already. And from here we are going to head first to Camp Tranquil. And from there we can continue all the way south to Eastern Sunderland. So here I'm checking on my hunting log for the order of the twin adder because we have one entry found here in Eastern Sunderland. And they can be found here. They are fairly low level Amalja. Night night. Now, interestingly, the Amalja Bruiser was listed as located in Southern Sunderland, but they can both be found here and that happens from time to time. The indications in terms of location in your hunting log are helpful, but you can find some of those enemies in other locations as well that are not going to be listed. Now 
Next up, I am going to head for Southern Thanalan, which we have not been to yet. But there is an access all the way south from Eastern Thanalan. So I'm going to head there. with an achievement unlocked for visiting the southern southern Sunland for the first time. So I have two reasons to come here. One, I'm going to show you where you can find the Amalja uh, entry for the hunting log in southern Sunland. The other has to do with gathering Now, as far as a hunting log is concerned, so you have some level 26, 27 enemies around here, including the Amalja I was looking for, the Amalja Bruiser. So it's that type of enemy that we also found in Eastern Sunaland, but if you come to Southern Sunaland, to hunt them down, they are found in this area south of the hamlet called Little Alamigo. And now our hunting log rank 1 is complete, which means that next time I will be able to level up my ranking next time I visit the uh, Grand Company headquarters. And now we need to head for the southernmost part of Southern Sunderland, which unfortunately can be a bit tricky because there are a lot of level 45 to 49 enemies around. But there is a way to avoid all that. So if I go here, which seems the most obvious way, you will see that the Amalja we see here are level 45. So either you do what I'm doing right now, which is uh, being extremely careful <laughs> in order to avoid everything on my path, Or there is a way to actually avoid all of that, which is a bit hidden, uh, and that I will show you uh, during the MSQ. And we are finally arriving at the Sagoli Desert, which occupies a good third of southern Thunalan. And this is what I came for. Those specific rocky outcrops, which hold Bomb Ash. Bomb Ash is used in particular to create steel ingots. And steel ingots are going to be your base metal for a lot of recipes between a level 25 and a 38 roughly. And as you can see, it still requires one pinch of bomb ash, but also two chunks of iron ore. So while you will have to come here to gather the bomb ash, 
you will also need to continue gathering iron ore back in Western Sutherland. So I'm gathering a few more bomb ash. I'm also going to gather one selects and here I was unlucky because with 90% success rate <laughs> I still managed to miss one. Those things happen. I'm going to throw the selects away for now and you'd be forgiven for thinking that selects isn't used in much but if you look at how many recipes yours clear glass lens. As you will see, silex actually enters in the composition of many, many items. But I'm not going to need it for now, so that's why I'm still throwing it away. So now I'm quickly returning to Gridania to rank up with my grand company. All right, so Let's talk to the Serpent Personal Officer. So reminder, we needed to complete rank 1 in the Ground Company Hunting Lock, which is now done. Your present rank is Serpent Corporal. In order to be promoted to Serpent Sergeant 3rd Class, you must fulfill the following requirements. And that's paying out 5,000 seals. which is down. I am now a Serpent Sergeant 3rd Class. Now this rank is not going to change much. Except for the fact that I have new assignments available and new items available at the Serpent Quartermaster. However, if I move up to Sergeant Second Class, which I'm going to do now, which costs 6,000 seals, in the sight of the elementals, I hereby confer upon you the rank of Serpent Sergeant Second Class. I am pleased to inform you that, as of this moment, you are eligible to undertake expert delivery missions. Go forth and do that which brings peace to the Twelfth Wood and honor to our name. Now that is a lot more significant. To bolster their strengths, the Grand Companies of Eorzea seek donations of rare items. Accepted items are those which are sellable and whose names are not yellow in their help window. Ethereal gear is an example of such. If you wish to make a donation, speak to a Grand Company Quartermaster to complete the delivery. You will be rewarded company seals for your contribution. Okay, so let's have a look at how it works. Let's talk to the Serpent Personal Officer and move to the Expert Delivery tab. And here is a list of all the items in your possession that you can hand over. Regardless of whether they are found in your armory chest or inventory, by the way. And here I can give any gear that has a colored background. Basically, it's a great way to get rid of gear you've accumulated from dungeons and that you don't need. That way, instead of throwing them away, you can convert them to 
ground company sells. It's also a great way to sort out you, your inventory. The amount of seals you obtain for gear depends on the gear's item level. So it starts at 98 for gears found in Sastasha, Tamtara, Deepcraft and Copperbell Mines and goes up from there and you will see later on we will have gear that goes for several hundreds. Obviously we have also now access to a wider range of items from the Serpent Quartermaster. So we have access to all the gear found in the first rank tab. And we have now access also to some of the items in the second rank tab. Not all of them though, and also I am lacking the seals to buy a lot of it. That's why so much of it is grayed out. And that's about it for what we can get with our new rank. In order to go to the next one, we will need 7,000 seals, which I don't have yet. So we will have to return to get promoted to first sergeant. Also, we now have a brand new list of enemies for the Order of the Twin Adders hunting log. Some of them are found in the wells, but again, some of them are found in certain instances, so-called optional instances. In this case, the Sunken Temple of Khan, which is a level 35 optional dungeon, which we are going to take care of once we reach that point in the MSQ. But for now, I am going to head to Ulda with a detour to the Mandeville Gold Saucer so that I don't have to pay any gil for it. And we are going to head for the Miner's Guild, and that's going to be the last place we visit today before we conclude this video. Okay, and time to talk to Adalberta. 1120, Old Wisdom, New Ways. Adalberta has a mind to teach you about Materia. The rewards are 24,360 points of experience, 470 gil, an iron pickaxe, and a choice between a cotton coif of gathering, all classes level 19, initiates slobs, leg gear level 20, cotton work gloves, Hand gear level 20, padded leather duckbills of gathering, foot gear level 19, or four Alagan bronze pieces for a total value of 200 gil. Ah, Ninua, I hear you passed the vice foreman's test. 
Well done. I never adopted that you'd manage it, but I'm proud of you all the same. Tell me, did the canyon have any words of advice for you by any chance? I see. In case you are wondering, the vice foreman used to be a miner himself. But more than that, he used to be my mentor. My father was a miner too, but he died in a cave-in when I was but a child. The guilds has been a home to me since, and its members my family. I grew up here watching girls sing and dance on that very stage. I even joined them for a while. It seemed the best way to please my adopted family. I did not want to become a miner back then, you see. After what happened to my father, I could scarcely face the thought of spending a moment underground, never mind a lifetime. Not that the stage suited me much better, which left what, exactly? Having been surrounded by miners for as long as I could remember, I began to wonder if I truly belonged among them. I even considered leaving. It was then that one of the guild's brightest and best took me by the hand and showed me the joys of mining. I speak, of course, of Deep Canyon. He taught me everything he knew, which was a great deal, and the more I learned of mining, the closer I felt to my father. I owe a lot to Deep Canyon, despite how things turned out. But I'm rumbling. I meant only to tell you that the man knows what he is talking about, when it comes to mining at least. Now, it's high time I taught you something. You are here to learn after all. It concerns the vice foreman's advice to you. He speaks true. A miner who neglects his gear can't hope to work to his full potential. In the past, if you wanted to improve your gear, you had little choice but to replace it. But these days, we have materia. By your confused expression, I take it you are not familiar with the stuff? Well then, I reckon a lesson is in order. Simply put, materia is a kind of crystal that enhances the properties of equipment it's attached to. The attachment process is fairly simple, but that wasn't always the case. Time was you needed substances called catalysts, and digging the stuff up once formed a healthy part of a miner's workday. Now, even though no one needs catalysts anymore, there is still educational merit in the gathering. To that end, I want you to try your hand at mining a variety of it, namely grade 1 carbonized matter. Fifteen fragments ought to do it. You'll have the best luck searching around the Deneville checkpoint over in Middle Lanosia. Oh, and you'll most definitely need your sledgehammer. So I'm quickly going to open a parenthesis to show you where you can find the grade one, the grade one carbonized matter. We are here in Middle Lanosia. So remember, we found some as botanists in Western Lanosia, and you can grab 30 of it to cover both the botanist quest and the miners quest. However, if you want to gather it as a miner, I'm going to show you exactly where it is. So we're going all the way up north of Middle Lanosia. And you can see the gathering points appearing here on the map. Just as with botanist, at those gathering points you only find the grade 1 carbonized matter and one type of elemental shard. So another place you are not going to visit very often. And with the leftover from the botanist's quest, I now have all 15 I need to complete the miner's quest. So we are going to return to Ulda. Parenthesis closed. How goes your search for carbonized matter? Don't forget, it's 15 fragments I want. Ah, 
I precisely 15 fragments of grade 1 carbonized matter. Well done, Ninua. Now, I expect you are keen to learn about materia. Well, the first thing I should tell you is that it's not been around for long, in Eorzea at least. Knowledge of its use only came to our shore a few years back. The process of enhancing equipment goes something like this. First, you take well-worn gear and extract materia from it. Don't ask me how. You then take the materia and attach it to the item you want to enhance. It's this procedure, known as melding, that once required catalysts like the kind you brought me. I should mention at this point that the actual task of melding is something that only skilled disciples of the hand should attempt. That's weavers, goldsmiths, and so on. These people used to depend on us disciples of the land to supply them with catalysts. Then catalyst free melding was discovered and we lost not a small source of work. But that's just progress for you and I try to be happy for it. Now, there are various kinds of materia, each offering unique benefits. And as I'm sure you've guessed, some of them can be exceedingly useful for miners. It's these which I recommend you seek out. Once you have found a materia you like, you just need to ask a friendly disciple of the hand to do the melding for you. I'm sure there's one among your acquaintances. I don't have acquaintances, but I do have <laughs> trained disciples of the hand who can melt. Thankfully. And while we are here, let's complete the next quest as well. Level 25, Water from Stone. Adalberta needs you to take on the work of an indisposed guild member. The rewards are 40,800 points of experience, 557 gil, a novice's sledgehammer, and a choice between a velveteen coty of gathering, body gear level 27, a velveteen sarwell of gathering, leg gear level 25, Fingerless goatskin gloves of gathering, hand gear level 25, goatskin crackers of gathering, foot gear level 25, or three, four Alagan silver pieces for a value of 2000 gil. Ninua, you could not have come at a better time. One of our number has been taken ill, you see, and I need someone to handle the work assigned to him. Tell me, are you familiar with effervescent water? Alchemists use it to make a substance called natron. And bakers use natron for leavening, that is, raising dough. Without it, there would be no ginger cookies, crumpets, blood currant tarts. As you may have gathered, I'm fond of the odd sweet or three. Course, effervescent water is good for more than just baking. A lot of miners ask for a drop of it in their drinks. Makes the stronger stuff that bit more refreshing, see? And let me tell you, there is nothing better to wash away the dust of a hard day's mining. But you did not come here to hear my thoughts on food and drink. You came here to learn about mining and so you shall, by procuring some effervescent water for me. The Alchemist's Guild needs 15 bottles of the stuff and urgently. They could not stress that enough. From what I can make out, they themselves are scrambling to fulfill an urgent order for Natron from the Bismarcks in Nimsaluminsa. It's one of Eorzea's finest restaurants, in case you didn't know. Anyway, you'd best get going. You'll need to work fast to make up for all the time I wasted chattering about sweets and grog. Oh, and you should have the best luck mining around Buscaron's skull over in the Black Shroud. 15 bottles of effervescent water, quick as you can. And remember, you are like to find it in Buscaron's scar over in the South Shroud. But as you know, we've already gathered them just before coming here to Ulda. Right in the nick of time. My thanks, Ninua. I'll see to it that these are sent over immediately. Ah, but before I do, I should probably expand on a bit on what we were talking about earlier. Specifically, the part about mixing spirits with effervescent water. See, I wasn't lying when I told you a lot of folk find the combination refreshing. It is refreshing. In fact, 
adding a bit of bubbly water makes the stuff go down so easily, you have to be careful not to drink yourself under the table. I say this partly for your own good, and partly because the lad whose task you just took care of wasn't careful. Daft Sod threw up right where you are standing. Oh, but did not end there. You could have told me that earlier. He then slipped in his own puke and split his head open on the bar on his way down. Suffice it to say, he won't be working for a while. Thankfully you took up the slack and all is well with the guild once more. I could do with a few more like you, Ninua. Keep up the good work, you hear? I love that Adalberta and Final Fantasy XIV does alcohol prevention. <laughs> Well, I'm a teetotaler, so at least that's something that's not going to happen to me. Having said that, that doesn't mean I cannot sleep somehow and hit my head anyways. For the time being though, I am going to conclude the video here. Just the time to return to an in-room. At the Adventurer's Guild. And we are concluding yet another day in Eorzea. Okay, so um, next time we are going to pick up the Disciple of Hand class quests here in Ulda before heading to La Nocher. In the meantime, I wish you all a great day, a wonderful week ahead, and until next time, bye-bye.